up with some more progress on the car. I can't do a lot because the old lockdown's been extended in Victoria till the end of the month, so I'm pretty much limited to what the postal service brings me, which isn't much at the moment. All my Ospos tracking hasn't moved for over a week, so um, I'll just carry on with what I can do. So I've got the sump off. This was full of sand and stones, which was interesting. So what I'm thinking about doing now is I, I bought a Dash 4 turbo oil filter, but the more I think about it, I think it's probably not worth it because the way that the, the standard oiling system works is it comes from the pump here and it runs through the block and it feeds into this hole here, which feeds into the filter, comes out of the filter, and then it loops through this little doodad and then out of this port and through the engine. So the filter is right there before my oil filter anyway. So it's not really going to do me any good. I might still replace this with a flex line. I don't really like the hard line that I've done. I'm thinking flex line might be more suitable there. So I'm still umming and ahhing about that. But at the moment, I've just yeah pulled it all apart. I took it all out because I needed to leak check it. Because when I had it in the car, and I don't think I've got the right side. No, I don't. When I had it in the car, it would build up oil here. And I thought it was weeping through where it had been welded previously. But I think what was happening is it was coming down the rear main. And it was running right along the edge of this sump and across these welds where I couldn't see it and sort of pooling here. Which makes sense because the rear main was definitely leaking. So I filled this with water. I filled it with thinners. I've pressurized it. I cannot get it to weep out of that hole anywhere. So yeah, I'm putting the back on. Um, I, I killed the, the O-ring, pulling it off because it's riveted into the sump and... Yeah, well that didn't really kill it, but it was glued. It was glued in the top here, and the more I pulled it, I ended up actually wrecking it. So I've got another one of those coming. I was post again, so who knows how long that'll take. I need that, and I need the rear main seal to put the um, the engine back together. So while I wait, I'm looking at changing some of these suspension bushings. I do have these. I ordered these like uh, six years ago, but just haven't done it. These are shot, as you can tell. They're all they're all perished. Probably original with the car. Um, this this is perished as well. Again, it's probably original. The the rotors are rusty, but they'll clean up after the first drive. I'm not worried about that. I'll probably order some new ones later, but for now, they'll do fine. So I want to change this. I want to change this. And I want to change the bushing in here. I have the bushings. I don't have the, the ball joint yet. Coming, I was supposed to again. So I'll get this apart and see how we go. Okay, just got the arms separated from the struts. The other one's over there, so I can trip over it later. Um, you'll see I've conveniently written DS on this. That's for maximum confusion because this is the passenger side. So that's good. Do that. Um, these need to come off next. As I said, I don't have these yet. There are different ones of these. There's ones that are curved and there's ones that are straight. I think the straight ones are for manual steer cars and the curved ones are for power steering cars. So they do fit. So I need to make sure I get the right ones on when I order it. But um, yeah, I'll start to strip these down now. All right, I've got this all apart now. Super easy, everything's 19 mil, it's exactly what you want. Um, these are shot, you can see around here the vulcanizing is, is cracking where it joins to the steel body. They're, they're hard as a rock as well, they're, they're, they'll be original with the car, it just comes off there. This one, yeah, this one doesn't look as bad, but again it's hard as a rock and it's Volvo original, so these probably have never been changed. So Now I'm going to do the part that I hate, I'm going to dick around for about 4 hours with the old press over here. And try and line up cups and discs and spaces and shit so I get these out without taking my face off. That'll be fun. Have a look at this. My genius is limitless. But my ability to stay alive may not be. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Here we go. My assorted totes of uh, bearing shells and bits of pipe and shit have uh, paid off again. So there's the old one out. Pops out of there. Shagged. And a replacement, it's Melee, Melee, Melee brand, but eh, it's a replacement, I don't, I don't care, it's not a race car. Well, not a circuit race car anyway, as long as it goes relatively straight, I'm happy. So I'm going to find a way to bang that in that hole. Okay, those are done, and I have done it without dying, which is a big big bonus. Um, funnily enough, they're actually different between right and left, the odd ones. Where am I here? But the factory sound deading deadening crap that they spray on here it's still original so I'm wondering if someone's changed like the whole arm previously instead of changing the bushing because it's odd that they'd be different left and right but now well, either way it's done moving on to this one now 
So these go in this way. We've got to pop those out somehow. Same on the other arm over there. Alright, so this bushing, the outer shell, is one of the hardest shells I've ever had to remove from a suspension bush before. I kept stripping out M10 threaded rod. All my tools are broken, I've broken drill bits, I've set it on fire, I've done everything I can think of. This is a Volvo D5 head bolt, and it's the only thing that's been strong enough to hold up to pull in this through. So, it's going now, focus. It's going now, so I don't know how I'm going to get the new one in, but I'm making progress. Alright, that's out. New one's going in. Try to focus on the thing, here we go. So that's a new one there. I've got an old shell that's a bit bigger than the diameter, so I'm not pushing on the rubber. A couple of spaces to try and save that nut, and yeah, let's see what happens. Yeah, getting there. It's about three quarters in now. It's slightly tapered, so it gets tighter as it goes in. I've broken my my washer, broken my broken my roller bearing. I've had to change the nut because I marred the other nut up. Yeah, it's it's not easy, not easy at all. But uh, it's nearly in. Well, it's in. Not happy about it, but it's in. The outer shells is all buckled here, but it's the bushing's still central. So whatever. Oh, I wish I didn't even try and do these. This is just not worth the effort. And now I've got to do it again. And in comparison to the other side, this one practically fell out. I mean, it didn't fall out. I still had to pull it out with the threaded rod, but it was so much easier to get out. And you can tell, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but the bush isn't central. So it's flogged, which is fine. So that one's got to go in. I'm going to try and lubricate this this time to see if it makes a difference because it's really difficult to get these in. Really, really difficult. All right. And what a difference that made. Oh, pulled it in with a 3 8 ratchet. So liberal application of high pressure grease everywhere. And it just pulled through. Hard, like my hands are throbbing, but the other one was hanging off the breaker bar with my knees on the vice. So this one's much better. Done. Yep, finally a delivery. Easy here. And then the grease tight, so I'll have to invest in a grease gun of some kind. I don't have one of those, but yeah. I'm sure that's not gonna be expensive, but that's these things. They only go in one way. If the holes line up, you got the right side. So yeah, that goes on there. I'll bang them in. Okay, that's in. Easy enough. 19 mil and send it with the Ugga Dugs. That's talked up as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm not going to put the grease nipples on until it's in the car because I will break that off trying to install it. So yep, I'll leave that for now. The other part is this. These little parts here don't come with the new arms, so just undo the nut. And then just whack that bitch out with a hammer. There we go. And we're done. They came with new nuts, so I've just whizzled those on. They're really stiff, but that's that's good. Better than it being loose. The other one's down there. Alright, so they're at the stage where they're ready to go back on. The sway bar link pin's still got an old bush in here. I'm looking at changing this, but it doesn't matter for now. So it'll do for now, because I'm going to change that up a little bit later on. I haven't decided what I'm going to do exactly, so it is what it is. I'm not spending money on it. This part's loose because this needs to be tightened up once the suspension is sitting. So I can get in there and tighten that nut later. The same will go with the bolt that goes through here. Once the, engine, the, the car is resting, then it needs to be done. I can't do that yet because there's not much going on in here. Still waiting for other suspension bushes. I did also order a new pair of these for the steering rack which should be nice and easy to swap over. I'm going to do that once the rack's bolted back in the car though because it's just easier than sort of flipping the thing around. It's over there on the ground, so... There's that bit. Uh, yeah. Okay, moving on to the turbo manifold again. I've unwrapped it again. I'm just setting the height of these studs. Um, it's very hard to get this nut in when you're in the car. And also the way these copper nuts function, I don't know if they're copper, but copper coloured nuts, is they've got a split in them and the thread pitch changes when they're torqued up. That stops it backing off when it gets hot. But the way the studs were set in previously, the stud would only protrude about halfway through the nut. So it wouldn't actually engage this top ring. So I'm just I'm just backing out these studs until they're flush with the top of the nut when they're tight but not torqued. 
and that'll give me another full turn to tighten it up before the, the, um, the stud bottoms out. I'm doing that with all of them and then I'm just going to pop a dab of weld on the bottom of these bolts just so they don't move again. That should make it so it's relatively easy to install. I still have to sort of drop this one in with the nut because there's no room in there. I, yeah, I don't know why. And yeah, the nuts will work properly then. So just doing that. It's tedious, but it needs to be done. It's ruining the end of the stud, but I don't care. I'm probably just going to lop that off anyway. Um, I was going to purchase new ones of these, but they're $80 for some reason. And it's not going to happen. So these will work. Yeah, one of the problems with having Smarty, pa Smarty Pants friends is... Uh, they want me to put sensors in everything and get data for reasons. So I'm going to drill a couple of holes in here while I've got it all apart. I don't have all the sensors or anything yet, but uh, this will be manifold pressure. And I'll have another one here for EGT. I only need one because I can't trim banks individually. So just the one to see pre-turb on should be fine. So just going to pop that in. Yeah, job done. I'm not a welder. Don't judge me. It is glued together. Metal has become one. So that's one of them done. I don't have the other bung, but it's looking like around here is probably going to be pretty good. But yeah, probably not today. So during one of my many shifter related battles, I went full hoff and hole sawed a hole in the tunnel so I could adjust the shifter from inside the cabin. Um, I don't need that anymore. And there's still a hole here. I don't really want to just put a grommet or flash tack over it. So I'm going to cut a circle out and just weld it in. Yep. That's welded all right. I'm just going to grind it down. I'm going to do seam sealer over the top. There's a little, there's a rip here in the floor. I'm just going to seam sealer over that because that's too thin to weld. So this is a double panel here, so it's a bit more forgiving. Done. All right. It just needs a seal with our seam sealer over the top and some paint. And I fixed up a little sharp bit that was here as well. Just have to put some new seam sealer over that. Um, I've also bought one of these trans, not trans, uh, tile sharp loops and proceeded to chop it up. I, I mainly wanted it for the curves because it's very hard for me to curve this material at home. So for 50 bucks, it, it'll be all right. Um, just cutting the legs off it because this is designed for a car that's got a completely flat floor. The Volvo doesn't. So the, the main hoop, the top hoop fits nicely where the center bearing goes. So I'm gonna put it in there and just weld the legs to the top, just here and here. And then the bolt section will do the bottom, but. I can't complete that until I've got the tail shaft in because I don't remember how low it hangs and I want to make sure there's enough bolt provisions to actually do what it needs. So I might do the top part, but I can't do all of it. But yeah, that's next. Yeah, we're back at it. Shed is still a mess, but finally some parts have arrived. So it's probably been, I don't know, nearly two weeks since I started this video. This is finally made at the 50 kilometer trip from Melbourne to Geelong. Fantastic. So that's there, so I can put that on the engine. Um, what else have I got? Everyone's getting dizzy, me walking around with my phone. Uh, that's the rear plate, so that's there as well. Seam seal to finish off the tunnel. Yeah, a couple of bits and pieces. So I reckon that will be the next job. I'll finish seam sealing underneath here and painting. While that's drying, I'll button the engine up together and start bolting it back to this transmission and back onto this frame. Okay, seam seal is done and drying underneath there. I've just flipped the engine over and cleaned off all of the surfaces where the gasket will sit. Just need to put a little bit of silicon on some of these surfaces. And yeah, put the rear, rear plate on. Rear plate just goes on finger tight for now. And then, yeah, the sump goes on after that. Okay, rear plate's on. I've just done the bolts finger tight. Just made sure that it's, it's flush on this side and this side. So I know the sump's going to seal. And it's central around the, uh, the output of the, the crank. All the other bolts I can't get to, so that's probably the reason why it was loose last time. I probably did it on the stand and then forgot about it later. But I've left them hanging out intentionally now, so when I put it on the crane and can get to the bolts, I'll be able to talk them up and remember to do so. Okay, next is the sump. I'm going to pull the seal off and stick it on here. I'm not going to rivet it because it just makes it very hard to remove it if I ever have to again. And the bolts will keep it central, so that should be fine. Sump is on and all the bolts are torqued up. Uh, except for these two here because these two go into the cover which isn't done up yet so cover done up first then torque those ones up but that all went on smoothly a little dab of uh, black ITV in all the corners probably a little bit too much of a dab but a dab is a dab nonetheless um, I'm going to put the oil filter on now and then I'm going to flip it over and get ready to put it on the crane all right on the crane 
rear plate is torqued. These are 18 foot-pounds for all of these. 18 foot-pounds for everything on the sump as well, except for these two, which are 108 inch-pounds, which is roughly 9 foot-pounds. So they're all torqued up, all looking good. The next part that I need to remember, unlike somebody from Carnage, I'm going to remember to put this on before I made it to the transmission. Left plate's back on, all torqued up to 74 foot-pounds, and I got to use my little tool I bought ages ago. See this little guy here? Bolts onto where the starter motor normally is, and it's got a bit of ring gear on it, so it stops the engine turning over when you're trying to torque bolts. It's fantastic. It's also really good for breaking the balancer bolt out. Um, I'm going to give that balancer bolt a nip while I've got this out as well, just because I don't know exactly how tight it is, so that's next. Engine bolted up the transmission. Went on beautifully. Just lowered the engine down a little bit. It was on a funny angle, so I just pulled the back of the transmission up and it just slid onto those dowels, no problem. Those bolts are all torqued up. I'm going to do the torque converter ones. Before I did that, I measured the depth the torque converter was sitting into the transmission and measured the, the flex plate to the block to make sure I wasn't going to crush anything. I had about a mil clearance, so all is well. Torque converter is all torqued up through here. Maybe. Uh -huh. There. Those go to 37 foot pound. So that's done. Next, I can put the starter motor back on. Starter motor and starter motor shield are back in. I haven't talked up the starter motor bolts yet. I need to remember to do that for later. Um, I always forget this little bracket that holds the shield on. I have to take the bolts out and put them back in again. No big deal. It's in there anyway. The next thing I need to do is put my frame back on. I need to do that because I need to also put the dipstick bolt on, but it's on the bracket, on the crane. I don't want to loosen that yet, so. Frame is on next. And that's a wrap. Engine is back on the stand, the proper stand. Engine mounts are all, all torqued up. I just need to run a couple of wires back to the original places, like the transmission loom. Um, yeah, it's pretty much ready to go back in. So I'm going to leave this here and the next video will be getting the engine back in the car, starting it up again, make sure it all runs and run it through the gears. That's something I've been waiting for for years. Will this transmission work? I've put so much time and money into it without any idea what I'm doing. I hope it bloody works because that's going to make or break this project. So stay tuned for next time. Please like, please subscribe. It's a little effort for you and it makes a huge difference for me. Thanks everyone for watching.